Hello there, everyone. How you doing today? I hope you're all well. Today we're going into r slash entitled people, where people are very entitled. You may not even believe it. If you enjoyed today's stories, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and check out the links in the description below. Now, without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Entitled Neighbor Wants Copy of Grandma's Will When my grandmother was diagnosed with cancer, she opted for no treatment. She had watched her husband go through chemo, radiation, and surgery, and he was miserable the whole time. She didn't want that for herself. Her family supported her. Over the next year, she gifted items to family and friends, told us to write our names on things we wanted, and to take what we wanted, and so on. There were conditions. No, you can't have that. It's a family heirloom meant to go to the aunt and her kids, or to dad and his kids. We all knew what those items were, and who they were going to, so that was easily settled after she died. The house was inherited by my father, who very suddenly and unexpectedly passed away two weeks later. I inherited the house at that point. The next-door neighbor, we'll call him Todd, came over several times, upset that he and his kids, 21 female and a 19 male, weren't invited to Grandma's funeral. There wasn't one. We were all too busy reeling for my father's death. And they weren't presented with a copy of the will. It only included family members, by the way. And he knew Grandma loved his kids like her own. And she didn't. She complained about them coming over all the time, stealing her water to fill her pool, and she had to tell them to stop calling her Grandma. He wanted to know if I would allow his kids to go through the house and see if there's anything they'd like to take to remember her by. Okay, first, dude, my grandma died four weeks ago, and dude, my dad died two weeks ago. I thought he was awfully rude, but I offered to let them go through the boxes I had packed that I was planning to donate, and he was offended. I mean mortified. He said his daughter and son had their hearts set on some items that were family heirlooms, and I literally laughed at him. I explained they were family heirlooms and would be staying with me and two of the items had already gone home with my brother. He said, My kids were her family and she would have gifted those to them. They should have been included along with everyone else when everything was divided up. Keep in mind that none of us knew this guy or kids other than the neighbors next door. They were never at any family gatherings that were held at her house, and the only time I ever heard her talk about them was when she was complaining about them, especially when she caught them using both her hoses to fill up their pool and then came over complaining because she had put locks on their outdoor faucets. Luckily, Todd's house was in foreclosure, and he moved away about a year later. I have more stories, but those will come later. My brother slept with and ran off with my ex, and now wants an invite to my wedding, getting my parents uninvited in the process. For the record, I tried posting this three days ago, but my account was too new. I wasn't even going to make a post about this, but my brother, who I'll call Turk, made four posts about it, so I thought I should share my side of the story. I'll use the same names he did for the sake of simplicity. My fiance is Maria, and my ex is Jen. A little over five years ago, my brother started dating Maria, my now fiance. Three months after they started dating, they set me up with her now ex, best friend Jen. The four of us did a lot together since the girls were best friends. Turk and Maria dated for a year, and Jen and I dated for nine months. At the end of our relationship, I came home early and found Turk and Jen having naughties in my bed. 
After I processed the situation, I called Maria because I'd want to know if I was in her place. She came over, and we had confronted Turk and Jen. They dumped us, and I found out two days later they started dating each other. It broke me. I came home to find my brother screwing my girlfriend, only to run off with her. I had to move back in with my parents. It was infuriating because they kept talking about how happy Turk and Jen were. Throughout the next couple of months, Maria and I started talking. We were two people in similarly cruddy situations, and we found some comfort in each other. Four months after we got dumped, Maria and I officially started dating. Six months after we got dumped, Turk found out that Jen was cheating on him, and she left him for the other guy. I actually only found this out today from reading Turk's post. Maria would get the occasional message from Turk, trying to reconnect, but she ignored him. Anyways, moving on to now. Maria and I are engaged and getting married in September. My parents were invited until my mom called me and threatened to not come if I didn't invite Turk. I told her not to bother coming regardless. In my mother's eyes, Turk can do no wrong. When he screwed and started dating my ex, I told my parents everything he did, and my mom tried defending him. Our relationship isn't the greatest, but it was somewhat decent. After I uninvited my parents, I only uninvited my mom, but my dad texted me and said he's not coming if my mom isn't. Turk blew up my phone, trying to get a hold of me. This is the first time he's even tried reaching out to me in four years. Like I said before, Turk posted about the situation here on Reddit, as well as apparently my parents told him that Maria and I were getting married, and that started this whole thing of them getting invited. He stopped calling me, but he's blowing up with my phone with texts, begging me to re-invite my parents and possibly give him an invite. I finally told my father's infantilizing friend that I hate him. Years ago, my dad met Harold through mutual friends, and they hit it off. I was 18 and in college when I met him, and we never had a close relationship. However, he always seemed to think of himself as a family friend, and was extremely infantilizing and condescending towards me. Every time I saw him, I tried to tell myself it wasn't that bad, only for him to prove me wrong less than a minute later. Harold would disrespect my boundaries, say things like, You're not 19, you're a baby, while I was talking to other people and patronize me, my education or my hobbies whenever he had the chance. He always noticed that annoyed me, to which he'd playfully ask if I hated him. I'd always say no, but only for my father's sake. The final straw came the day Harold interrupted a barbecue to say, I really like you, even though you're an impolite brat. I was 20 years old. I had been quiet all day, working on a paper during the barbecue, but replied patiently and politely whenever anyone addressed me. And even if that hadn't been the case, I knew he didn't have the right to talk to me like that. After that, I started making an effort to avoid any events I knew he'd be attending. Yesterday was my father's girlfriend's birthday. They threw a small lunch party at my dad's apartment. I went there with my fiancé and our six-month-old son. Harold was there. I hadn't seen him in months, but he still talked to me as if I was a dumb child. Never mind that I'm engaged, a mother, and 26 years old. I spent the whole party ignoring his helpful advice about me being too young to be married or be a mom. It helped that most of the other guests seemed to disagree with him. My baby spent most of the afternoon sleeping. There's a bassinet in my old room. He woke up hungry, so I went to breastfeed him and excused myself from the party for a while. I got back to jokes and comments, all from Harold, about how I was probably struggling if my son was managing to leech me away for so long. 
He went on to interrupt a conversation I was having with another of my dad's friends to question pretty much everything about my parenting. He doesn't even have custody of his daughter, by the way, and to make some comments about my age some more. I decided I couldn't take it anymore after he asked if I'd thought about giving my baby up for adoption. I got my son and told my fiancé we were leaving. We said goodbye to everyone except Harold. When we got to the door, Harold came to ask why we were leaving. I tried to make up an excuse, but he kept trying to make us stay. After a small back and forth, he jokingly asked if I hated him, and this time I said, Yes, I do. Can we go now? He didn't say anything, and we left. On the way home, my fiancé said he was proud of me. My father called this morning to say the opposite, and we had a small fight, but ultimately decided to drop the subject. I'm sure this isn't over, but if this keeps going, it won't be because of me. This is far from my proudest moment, and a small part of me regrets it, but I'm done with that guy. Sister wants my wedding, because it doesn't count as I'm gay. This is so unreal to me that a person has this much audacity, but apparently my sister does. I, 28 female, met my soon-to-be wife, 35 Noah, when she moved to my country for work. She was freshly divorced, but she has a little girl who was five called Lena. Lena is the sweetest, and it's been wonderful getting to know her. Noah divorced her husband after realizing she was gay, and he ran for the hills, stating he didn't want anything to do with her or Lena in case she passes it on, whatever the frick that means. I proposed to Noah ten months ago, as I know she'd be too nervous to do so. It wasn't extravagant, I just asked her over dinner with Lena's blessing. We've agreed we want it simple and intimate for the wedding. Her first wedding was big and she hated it, so just family and close friends. My parents have offered to give us some money to help towards it, even though we've assured them it's not going to be a big affair. But they wanted Lena to get a pretty flower dress and wanted to pay for my dress and whatever Noah will wear, probably a suit. Enter my entitled younger sister, Kate who acts like she and her BF are engaged, but he's too scared to actually ask her. She's the golden child, spoiled, and gets whatever she wishes. She's made some remarks about Noah already having a child, and being a divorce, but I told her to lose the ignorance. Just because she decided to stay in our small hometown and expand her personality doesn't mean she can stay stuff like that. Over dinner last night, she started whining about how I didn't need money, and she didn't know why we were bothering at the wedding, when Noah has done it all before, but has suddenly decided she's gay and wants to have another go at a marriage with a woman. This is something Noah is insecure about, so I could get protective of her. Kate went on to say that she could resume her first wedding dress, and started cackling. Her boyfriend looked embarrassed, and my parents told her to be quieter, but no one said anything else. My parents have come to me and said it made sense to them if they give more money to my sister's wedding fund, as it will be her first and only wedding, not even engaged yet, totally ignoring the fact that I have never been married. I told them to keep all of their money, as it wasn't welcome if they were going to shame my wife and stepdaughter. We are perfectly able to fund it on our own. Edit. I didn't say it as they've never been homophobic towards anyone or when I came out as bi, but I do wonder if a little part of them feel a straight wedding deserves more funding than a gay one. Since people are asking, Kate asked for the majority of what they'd offered me to be taken back and will be put away for her, so that's what they've said they'll be doing. I never asked for the money in the first place. Also, Katie said, why do we even need a reception if there isn't going to be a bride and groom? Why have a normal wedding? So yeah, she doesn't think a gay wedding should be as important.
That's the end of today's video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment down below with your thoughts. Maybe hit my description, the links in the description up. I will see you all next time. Hasta la pasta.